Gabby, uh, Gabby from Savills, um, the residential head of residential research. I'm good, thank you? you. Morning, everyone. Um, so I'm an associate director in the residential research team at Savills, um, and I specialise in new homes research across London and the UK. Brilliant. Well, thank you for that. Uh, so that that's a good sign. The technology works, which is which is fine. We've seen everybody at least once, so we can sort of crack on. Really, Gabby, do you want to just? I think the first part of this is a presentation. We're going to go from sort of global to local. Um, um, over Perfect, to you. Thank you. So, yes, I'm going to start the session off um, by giving an overview of what has happened across the UK housing market um, and then a bit of a focus on the local market of Slough as well. So just to start, um, I think it's safe to say that what's happened in the housing market over the last year has been very unexpected. Uh, so we came into the outbreak of COVID-19 and we saw the economy plunged into recession. But for the first time, we saw the housing market move in the opposite direction. Um, and that's partially due to the unique circumstances that COVID provided. So also, unlike previous recessions, we came into 2020 with very low house price growth. Uh, we were in a very low interest rate environment. And there were generally expectations that it was going to be quite a short and sharp downturn. We, of course, also saw quite quick intervention from the government to protect jobs through furlough. And the stamp duty holiday has provided um, a bit of an extra safety net for the housing market. So the market has been amazingly strong over the last year, but it has been driven largely by those with greater financial security. So much of the activity that we have seen has been from people reassessing their housing needs after the experience of lockdown. So we found that the market has been very much driven by behaviour rather than economics. So as a result of this, we saw much stronger house price growth over the last year than we would have expected. So it's up at 7.1% in the year to April. Um, and we've seen sort of record breaking transactions with over 180,000 transactions completed in March. Um, that's the highest monthly figure since 2004. Um, but of course, a lot of these were in anticipation of the stamp duty holiday ending. But actually, with the announcement of the extension, uh, new sales being agreed has still remained very strong. So in March, they were still 25 percent higher than the uh, monthly average in 2019. But of course, with the market being driven by behaviour, this activity has not been equal across the country. Um, so we know that COVID-19 has changed what buyers are looking for in a home. Um, so there's been more emphasis on internal space, outside space, um, and less of a focus on being uh, close to work locations. Um, and we've seen that this has really benefited London's commuter belt and across the east of England and southeast, um, which have seen the greatest increases in new sales being agreed um, compared to before the pandemic. And you can see uh, on the map those areas in darkest blue being those that have seen that biggest increase in activity. So a clustering around London and then also out to more uh, lifestyle locations sort of across the southwest, along the south coast. Um, and up through East Anglia. So what does this mean for a market like Slough? Well, Slough represents significant value um, opportunity compared to neighbouring markets. So in the 12 months to January of this year, the average transaction in Slough was £358,000. Uh, that was 46% lower than the average of 660000 in neighbouring Windsor and Maidenhead. Um, and even comparing to similar markets such as Reading, in the Thames Valley, the wider southeast and particularly London, again, Lond uh, Slough really does present value. So the average transaction in Slough was again 46% lower than the average in London, despite sitting just outside the capital, uh, was 15% lower than the average across the southeast and even two and almost 2.5% two and lower than the average for Reading, which is significantly further from London. But actually, despite Slough being a lower value market, it has seen very strong house price growth uh, shown in the chart here on the right. So house prices in Slough are currently 46 percent higher than they were at the peak of the market uh, just before the global financial crisis. 
Um, and this compares to 39% across the southeast and just 29% across England and Wales. And much of this growth in Slough has been sort of in the last six years, alongside the construction of Crossrail and, of course, the ongoing regeneration of the town centre. So since January 2014, house prices in Slough have increased by 55%. Now, in terms of who lives in Slough, uh, its demographic is more similar to areas such as Reading and London, uh, rather than sort of its direct neighbour um, of Windsor. So Slough has a particularly strong rental market, uh, which really appeals to young professionals. So around a quarter of households are living in the private rented sector. Um, and this is higher than the average for the South East, which is around 18%. And it's more in line with the averages seen in Reading and London, which are around 27 and 26 percent, respectively. So as such, a high proportion of households in Slough are classed as uh, rental hubs, according to Experian. So these are categorised as predominantly young single people in their 20s and 30s who are living in urban locations and renting from private landlords whilst they're in sort of the early stages of their careers. And the appeal of the area to young professionals can also be seen in the age profile of households. So 30% of households in Slough are aged under 40, um, compared to an average across the southeast of around 22%. And we found that sort of the regeneration of the town centre, those improving transport links and the employment opportunities um, means that there's an even higher proportion of young people moving to Slough. So we found that over the last two years, 35% of households moving to the area were aged under 40. And whilst the majority of movers were moving locally across the southeast, 20% uh, of those movers were coming from London. And now, of course, following the experience of lockdown, um, we have seen that growing preference for more space, um, a greater emphasis on quality of life, more, um, more buyers looking to markets outside of London. And that is likely to continue benefiting markets across the commuter belt. So bearing that in mind, what do we think will happen next? Well, we think there is less of a risk of a mid-year lull um, with the extension of furlough and the stamp duty holiday continuing in a tapered form until September. Though we do think the market may slow a bit after June. But coming out of lockdown and, of course, the speed of the vaccinations um, will help to boost consumer confidence as well as the economy. Uh, we think that there will still continue to be lifestyle reasons uh, driving the market throughout 2021 with people still looking for space. But from 2022 onwards, um, hopefully lockdowns will be far behind us um, and we do expect the market to return, therefore, more to sort of economic fundamentals. Um, and future house price growth will be driven by interest rates remaining very low, but the greatest growth is likely to be in markets which haven't seen such strong growth over the last decade, such as the Midlands and the North. But the South East is expected to see strong growth of 17% over the next five years, outperforming London. And that was everything from me. Thank you for listening, and I'll hand you back to Matthew.